What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and I am here today with the review for The Real Housewives of Atlanta. This is season 13 episode number 11 and the episode was titled The Unusual Suspects you guys. So without further ado let's go ahead and jump into this episode review shall we? All right you guys so the episode um it picks up where the last one left off. You guys remember that Toya had cooked, you know, dinner for them and they wanted Portia to pray over the food. And you guys know Portia said she wasn't in the mood to pray over the food. So then Cynthia prays over it and, you know, all the ladies eat the food and they tell Toya, you know, how good the food was. And Cynthia lets us know, well, she lets Candy know that, you know, Thanks to Candy and the night before, she learned that she's a voyeur. I'm like, oh, you know what? <laughs> Not to get too deep into my my personal life, but I'm, I'm with Cynthia. I'm sorry. I do, I, you know, I like voyeurism. I, I, it's, I mean, it's just something about it. Like, it, 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 it does something to you. I'm not. I ain't even lie to you. I like it. I like seeing other, you know, it's like watching a live action porn. I'm, I just got to be real with you. It's like watching a live action porn. Voyeurism, yeah. Um, exhibitionism. I'm just giving away a lot of shit tonight to you guys. <laughs> but it is what it is. You, you know, we family here, so it is what it is. So then, you know, they also talk about Bolo's penis. And, you know, Cynthia's like, yeah, that thing was definitely real. And, you know, I was scrolling through social media. I was scrolling through Twitter last week and people were posting videos of Bolo. And there was this one video of him. It looked like a coconut. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> what the fuck is this? And all I'm going to say is if Portia did have sex with him, girl, use a strong one. Use a strong one. That's all I got to say. Because the videos that I did see, because, I mean, I just happened to be scrolling on my timeline. And I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, is that? Oh, damn. Use a soldier for taking that if you took it. But, you know, it is what it is. So then, you know, um, now see, here's where I, got, where I got irritated. It was with Latoya. So Latoya, because Drew even said, yeah, that thing was real. So then Latoya wants to, you know, ask Drew, like, how does she know? Girl, y'all were, hold it. It's like y'all were at the same fucking party. Like, what you talking about? And then she's talking about the fact that Drew is married. Okay, what they got to do with the price of tea in China? You're married. She's talking about, well, I'm going through a divorce. But you're not divorced yet. So it's, a, it's, it's something that, it's a moot point, pretty much. Like, you judging her, but you still married. Even though you say you're going through a divorce, you are still technically married under the eyes of God and until your divorce is finalized. The fuck? So then says, then Toya says, well, you know, was that you? That Kenya heard at around 6 a.m. And Drew said, oh, wait a minute. Don't go there with me. Like, don't drag me into something. And then Kenya wants to, you know, kind of chime in. And Drew asked Kenya, like, Kenya, wait a minute, girl. Are you jealous of what happened the night before? Because... You know, are you jealous, guilty, something like that? Like, what is it with you? And, you know, she says, like, you were up here trying to, you know, just basically trying to figure out who did what. She's like, I wasn't trying to figure anything out. I'm like, yes, you were, Kenya. I mean, I, I, at first, I think Kenya might have been just playing, but I think it got a little serious after a while. So then, you know, t um, Toya chimed in, which was really confusing. She asked Kenya, why was she trying to investigate stuff? And, you know, Kenya's talking about she heard the noise. It's coming from the room, from that side of the house. She said, and it wasn't coming from Kenya's room because Kenya was in her room snoring. So now you're insinuating that it was coming from Portia's room. Portia ain't said nothing because she said, because Portia, like, she hadn't directly said anything to me. So I'm not, I'm not studying Kenya. The thing that bothers me with Kenya is the judgment. And then Kenya's going to sit there and talk about the fact that Brooklyn was there. And I was just like, wait a minute. So, but your daughter was there when you guys were downstairs with Bolo before the producers left. So what's the big difference? And then two, you knew that 
Bolo was coming. So what did you expect was going to happen at a, a bachelorette party? I'm, I'm still confused on that one. So actually, you know what? Let's say, let's just get off this topic for a little bit. Because I want to talk about, because I watched Candy speak on it from last week. And she had Don Juan on there. So Candy cleared some things up. The one thing she cleared up was about the fact of the women bringing the kids on the, on the trip. <clears throat> because she said in the in seasons past... They couldn't bring their kids on. They were not allowed to bring their kids. Like the kids couldn't be in. The, like the kids could not be in the main house with them. So then that makes me want them. That makes me start to think about Kim Zosiak. I'm like, is that why Kim never went on? Never wanted to go on the cast trip because she couldn't bring her kids. Like that would make sense. And you know, Candy said they didn't really get lax on bringing the kids until last season with Kenya and Portia. When they brought, you know, Brooklyn and um, baby PJ to Greece with them. But even still, they couldn't be with when they were filming when, you know, they, the kids couldn't be there. They had to be somewhere else. They had to. So I'm under, I'm understanding a little bit more with with that. But let's go ahead and just move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so I pulled my glasses off because that light was starting to, it was starting to irritate my eyes a little bit. The light bouncing into my glasses and my eyes, it was irritating. All right, you guys, so where do we want to start at? So all the ladies are back in Atlanta, so let's start up with Miss Drew Sedora. So now that Drew is back, you know, you guys remember that when she was um, in South Carolina, North Carolina, whichever Carolina it was, she, you know, remember Ralph was telling her that they were packing up because they were getting ready to move. Well, now Drew is back in their new home. It's full of boxes and Drew has to unpack. So then Drew begins to tell Ralph about the bachelorette party. And, you know, she tells him, you know, that it was um, can like Candy's dungeon party. Man, um, I actually had, you know, one of my friends actually had got tickets to the dungeon party last year. She gave it to me to go, but I when I got it was in downtown Dallas. And if you know anything about downtown Dallas, it's, it's always, even at night, you can never find anywhere to park downtown. It's the worst. So I went down there. I couldn't find anywhere to park. I dipped out because I just was not. Because the one place that I did find to park, it was too far to walk. It was like, so where her party was, it was like a whole mile away. I'm like, yeah, it ain't that deep. So, yeah, she's talking about the dungeon party. So then Drew also is telling Ralph about, um, you know, Bolo's Bolo. And how, you know, he flipped her over, smacked it, rubbed it, flipped it, rubbed it down, all that kind of stuff. And coincidentally, Ralph got mad at Drew. And I'm like, wow, how are you getting mad at your wife? When And even Drew said it. When you went to Tampa... I don't know what you did in Tampa. I don't know who you were with in Tampa. He said, I was staying at a hotel. She says, okay, what hotel were you staying at? He's like, that qu the question that you ask on a mad stupid. No, the questions that she asking are mad accurate. Like, <laughs> it, you you want to get mad at her for one thing, but you want to be secretive about what you did. It's a double standard. It, it's, it's, it's a contradiction. More, more specifically, it's a contradiction, Ralph. You want to be mad at her for a bachelorette party? Did it get a little out of hand? Maybe. But you left for days. Didn't tell her where you went. And didn't tell her who you were with. So, I think she has more of a reason to be upset with you, Ralph. Are you mad because Bolo's manhood might be a little bit bigger than your manhood? Is that what it is? Just, just, wonder, just wondering. Just wondering. Just wondering. But let's move on. All right, you guys, next, Cynthia. So Cynthia is back home and she's talking to Mike and she's telling Mike about, you know, the girl's trip and the bachelorette party as well. Now, Mike is having someone come over to fit his suit. Um, so, yeah, Cynthia told him about Bolo and how well endowed Bolo is. And he's like, wait a minute, how do y'all know how well endowed he is? She said he whipped it out. He was <laughs> he was kind of doing it like a um a windshield wiper. He said a windshield wiper. She's like, yeah, a windshield wiper, you know, eek. I thought it was funny. 
And, I, you know, I'm glad that Mike is... I guess, you know, I, I think we can say Mike is just securing himself. Like, even if the man has a big dick, Mike is not jealous. He's not insecure. He's not anything like that. He's just, like, having fun with her. So he got a water bottle. And he's like, so did he do it like this? And, you know, he got in front of us. You know, he's dancing in front of Cynthia. You know, I will say, though, when it comes down to Mike and Cynthia, as corny as I think they are, it works because I, I actually enjoy Mike and Cynthia. Really do enjoy them, too. Um, but it was it really was funny to see him do that. So funny. And like I said, I'm just, he's it was it was better. I like Mike's response a lot better than um, than um, Ralph's. A part of me, like I said, a part of me feels like with Ralph, it's just an insecurity thing. And with Mike, he's securing his woman. He ain't worried about it. He know that he got her f for however long they be for however long they're married. But yeah, it was it was cute nonetheless. It was it was fun to see. So let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. Next, we got Candy. So Candy is meeting up with Don Juan, and you know Todd is in New York, and you know that that girls trip. It was very eventful. It was very eventful. So you know the ladies had a really good time. You know, when we got back to the house, Bolo was there. And, you know, some of those girls, like, they was in the heat, more specifically, Portia. Yes, Portia did look like she was in heat, like she did. <laughs> so, you know, and she also told him that the night got really wild. And, you know, then the next day, you know, we, I said, what happens in the dungeon stays in the dungeon but then you know kenya is going around and she's saying that she heard sex noises now she said she heard it coming from the side of the house that i was on but she heard it coming from you know the middle bedroom close to portia see <laughs> i'm with candy like why you know it's one thing now i can see it if no, I, I'm just, I can't see it anyway. I don't. It's a girl's trip. It's a bachelorette party. There's a stripper. You're having fun. You're letting your hair down. You just, whatever troubles you got back in Atlanta, that's in Atlanta. Tonight, we having fun. We turning up. We making out. If we want to have sex with each other, we going to have sex with each other. If we want to, you know, kitty click, let's kitty click. Let's kiss, let's kitty click, let's use, you know, I'm pretty sure they had toys, whatever. Let's use that shit. Let's have fun. It's one night. It is one night. Now, when Don Juan was tall, I, when I saw that, I'm like, oh, because I'm like, I hope and pray Portia does not get on social media and say anything. Like, because Candy and Portia... And even Don Juan at this point, they're all in a good space. I'm like, oh, girl, please don't get on social media and say anything. And I didn't see her tweet anything. And I was just watching the Bravo chat room before I came in here. She just said, don't go there, Don Juan. And she just said he wasn't invited. But so I'm like, OK, that's that's light. That's 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 light. Because we know how poor she is on social media. Um. Because he was talking about he got a he got a piece of that social justice snatch. He said uh, only fans, you know, Portia for real. I'm like, oh God, why is he doing this? Um. So yeah, I mean, in a nutshell, I just don't understand Kenya. I mean, it would be one thing if the girls were upstairs where Brooklyn was, you know, wherever Brooklyn was, close to the, her having sex and making noises or, or doing whatever if they were you know if they were doing it really close to Brooklyn I would understand that but you guys were a part you know you guys were separated from where she was so I mean it is what it is it is what it is let's move on all 
All right, you guys, so I'm going to talk about Portia before I get into Kenya. So we see Portia. She's back at home as well. And Drew comes over to her house. So, you know, they both talk about the trip. Drew and Portia like each other. They had a really great time with each other. Oh, I hope this is... You know, I'm, I've been, I, I was thinking about this the other day. You know, here over the last few years, you know, we've, had young, we've gotten younger people on the show. You know, we had Shamari DeVoe from season 11. No, no, no. Season, no, it was season 11. We had Shamari and we had Eva. And, you know, Portia got along with Shamari and she got along with Eva. <laughs> and then season 12, she didn't get along with Eva no more. Well, that was because Eva was shady. So I'm, I'm going to let that one go. But I hope that, you know, it, with Drew and Portia, because I, like I, I like the dynamic with Drew and Portia. They seem like, you know, they'll have a good time with each other. Um, so they talk about the, you know, they talk, like I said, they talk about how they had a great time. And they talk about the bachelorette party in Kenya. And, you know, Portia, once again, like she said, she's paying Kenya dust. Like, if Kenya can't come flat, flat out and say what she is accusing her of, ooh, let's backtrack. Because I forgot to mention one big thing at that dinner. Why did Tanya feel the need to say, oh my God, like I spent the night with, in this girl's room. Tanya, you just, I mean, can't you already know Kenya is insinuating that you, Portia, and Bolo had a threesome with each other. Again, there is, no, there is literally nothing wrong if they had a threesome with one another. I don't really give a rat's ass if they had a threesome, but you just really just gave this girl everything that she needed. So they talk about the trip and how the, it was fun, but when Kenya started with, up with her mess, it just wasn't good. And then, you know, um, Ralph called um, Drew. He asked her, well, she, she said, oh, I'm, I'm on my way to the store. My, meanwhile, she's drinking mimosas with Portia and eating a, a, a muffin. I'm like, ooh, Drew, I like you even more. So then, you know, Portia asked her, so did you tell Ralph about everything? She said, yes, he did, I did, but he got mad. And then, you know, she mentions um, Tampa. So Portia asked her, well, do you think anything happened in, in Tampa? She says, no, because he's never given me any reason to believe that it would they don't necessarily have to give you a reason to believe it because some men are sneaky as hell and they try to they try to be sneaky. So he doesn't necessarily have to give you a reason. I mean, yeah, he doesn't have to give you a reason, but I'm a hope for the best. Which you, Drew Drew, I'm a hope for the best. But let's move on. All right, you guys, and then let's wrap the episode up talking about Kenya. So we see Kenya and, you know, she's doing a photo shoot for this magazine called Alpha Magazine, which I've never heard of before. But, you know, shout out to her for that when she says she's the newest cover model. So then Latoya shows up and, you know, Kenya wants to talk to Latoya about what happened back the final night of the dinner. So she is kind of confused by Latoya. Which I'm gonna I'm agree with Kenya. I was confused by Latoya as well, because one minute Latoya was coming at Drew, but then the next minute she's coming at Kenya, and you know Latoya said that she was just upset with Kenya for putting the ladies on blast. I'm like, but why didn't you just say that from the jump? Like, see, Toya to me, Toya feels like she's a flip. It feels like she flip flops and she goes wherever the wind blows. And even Kenya kind of alluded to that. Because, you know, I was listening to her. I'm like, yeah, it just seems like whoever, you know what, I'm going to keep it real. She She's kind of like Marlo. Like Marlo goes where the wind blows, you know. And, you know, so, but she said she was putting her on blast. And then in this scene, like I have some, I think, who was it that said in my comments? I, like, I want to be correct. I believe it was Micheline, Micheline who said it in my comments. And I, I thought about it too. Kenya is jealous of Portia. You guys might not like that I said it, but think about it. You gotta be honest. Portia and Latoya were making out at the bachelor party. I don't think Kenya wants Latoya in that sense, but she definitely has a girl crush on Latoya. And then she even said that she had a crush on her. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you got a crush on her and you felt some type of way that she got hella drunk and she straddled Portia. She's kissing Portia and she wasn't straddling you. 
But I mean, that's not a big deal. That really ain't that big of a deal. So then we later see, no, ooh. So I'm actually, so I'm, I'm about to come to Kenya's defense on, on in this scene. So Kenya met with her attorney. And I was confused too when the producers asked her the question, why are you doing a custody settlement instead of going for a divorce? But she explained it, but it just, I, I get it. You want that stuff settled, that stuff settled. But Mark is a terrible person. And from what we see, he's a terrible husband to you. So I don't know why you put up with it. So then <laughs> attorney busted out laughing when she told him that Mark has been sending her songs. He said, love songs. <laughs> she said, yes. And he started laughing. <laughs> And I figured then he then he I figured it out like oh that's why he's laughing, because <clears throat> her, her attorney knows that Mark is on some bullshit, so it looks like they've been trying to serve Mark some papers at his home, but every time that they go someone goes there to serve him, they tell him they tell the person that he doesn't live there. I'm like oh wow, Mark is a total a hole. <clears throat> <clears throat> So the reason that the attorney was laughing is because Mark went and filed for divorce in um in New York. Now how does now that's the part that I didn't understand? How does that work? Because Kenya and Mark got married in what was it, Saint Lucia? So where did they file their marriage? So did they file their marriage license in, in Georgia? Is that what they did? That's what that's what I'm confused about. Did they file the marriage license in Georgia and not New York? Where is their marriage license filed at, you guys? If you guys know that, please let me know in the comment section below. So yeah, he's filed for divorce, and he wants Kenya to pay him alimony. I was like, oh, that is fucked up. And then in the documents, he said for custody of Brooklyn. For that to be determined by the courts, I was like, wow, that is really janky. So you want money from Kenya, but when it comes down to your daughter, oh, let the courts decide how to, what to do with that. Kenya, you deserve so much better than Mark. Like, I'm sure there's a, I'm, there's, a, there's a man out there that would be more than happy to love you and your child. I think the best thing for Kenya to do is just go ahead and divorce him move on with your life like i said there is someone out there for you kenya don't don't continue to deal with this man and his his fuck shit like he's a fuck nigga like don't continue to deal with him move on with your life show your child you know show your show your daughter how to how a man is supposed to treat her because that's not how a man is supposed to treat a woman and then the fact that he's still in freaking New York. Leave him, Kenya. Leave him. But that's it, you guys. Um, um, that's it for the review. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode. Please like this video and leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else. And also share this video. Be sure to go head over there and subscribe to the Planner channel. Be sure to... Um, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves, you guys. Remember, wash your hands, wear your mask, socially distance, and we will get through this together. And I will see you guys tomorrow for Love and Hip Hop Family Reunion. How many more episodes do we have of that? We're almost done with this series. All right, you guys. I'll see you guys later. Bye.